Hey, George. Daniel Linhart. How are you? I'm so good. It's so good oh, to see you. Wow. I think we were talking about it this morning, man. We're just in good moods today. We were feeling a little goofy, a little playful. Mm -hmm. um, we did our feelings chart with our, um, oh, I got to make sure I don't play with my, my headphones because it'll change the audio. Um, did our feelings chart with our leadership team this morning and you and yep. I were, were just a lot of energy, mm -hmm. a lot of goofiness. A lot of coffee. There was some coffee involved. That That is... That is for At least dang, on my sure. end. I probably had the equivalent of four cups by then. Wow. I know. For you, that's a lot. I mean, it you is. go through seasons of not having any. I do. Extreme I highs and I extreme lows with you. I don't, I, you know. Uh, to, yeah, to a certain extent, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have an espresso machine, and um, I really enjoy the espressos in the morning. And then Do you I do like the straight espresso, or do you like Americano? No, straight espresso. Okay. Yeah. And then I enjoy the warmth and yeah, taste of coffee throughout 11 o'clock. Yeah. I can't do it in the afternoon. I'm with you there. Like I'll switch to tea sometimes, but that just takes work. And it's just caffeine of a different flavor. Well, you go I to try herbal. not. Yeah. I try to do herbal or like, I like mint tea in the afternoon. It makes my stomach feel better. Cause we know as we were just talking that everything I eat, I complain about my stomach later. So I really enjoy butterscotch blondie black tea. It's fantastic. It tastes like, Butter like butterscotch scotch. and I put a little blondie. bit of whole milk in it. It's quite delicious. Do you have this, do you have the memory of the, that like old people ate the butterscotch candies? And like, it was always like my grandparents that had butterscotch mm -hmm. candies around. And now and this every is time- no I, offense to old people. No, this is not a critique. This is just no. a, an observant. I mean, it's observant. Werther's original. Observant. Yeah, a Werther's original. That's right. And I also really, really, really enjoyed butterscotch pudding as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Jello butterscotch bit pudding. Put some cool whip on it. Mm. It's basically a pumpkin pie, really. At that point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why only at Thanksgiving for pumpkin pie? It doesn't make any sense. They're delicious. I feel like pumpkin pie should be a year round thing. I feel like that's a marketing ploy. I mean, it does make mm -hmm. sense seasonally, but we can mm -hmm. grow pumpkins or get access to pumpkins any time of the year now. Anytime. You walk it's, down, cans of pumpkin. Yeah. Cans of pumpkin. And um, I get it. I mean, it used to be that that's the, when you harvested pumpkins was in the late fall, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like the whole thing, you know, don't wear white after Labor Day. Okay, fine. But why? Don't tell Come me what on. to do. Don't tell me what to do. We're white. <sighs> well, speaking of what? that, Okay. We have something to celebrate today. Did you know this? I do know this. Well, that's because I we planned this together. Oh, I see it's what you true. did there. I know. Um, and I this noticed. is episode 60. We have done 60 episodes 60. on our podcast, Daniel and Hart. I love it. I, um, I'm just proud of us. We kept with it. We have. We've set a rhythm, discipline, if you will. Yeah, I like that word. Um, I thought we'd take today and do a little, a little stroll down memory lane. Uh, a little nostalgia. That's right. I'd like to go back and see where have we come in the last 60 episodes. Where mm -hmm. was, what was the date of our first episode? Do you remember? You probably, I just want to challenge you. Don't look. Do you remember what first the what? date, the first episode, what was the date? You can go episode zero or episode one. I want to say zero was in December sometime and one was in early January. Oh, wow. Way off. I'm really oh. surprised. You are the man of dates. <laughs> um, first episode or zero, episode zero was March 4th, 2019. No. At least that's what it shows up on my podcast. No. App. That's what shows up on play. Really? And then the episode one came out on March 11th, 2019. You don't seem confident now. It was cold still. I think that's why you went because you, we were complaining about the cold. Are you asking about when it was released or recorded? Or released. Okay. I'm you pretty sure we, we recorded. We didn't record it three months before we released it. I... I mean, I know for those that don't know how the magic of podcasting works, oftentimes we're recording something that doesn't get released for a few weeks, but it's usually only a few weeks, not a few months for us. Larissa, if you're listening I, out yeah, there, would you go ahead and, uh, could, you, you go ahead and just, uh, right while we 
continue. Just find out when we recorded <laughs> that, fact, please. That'd be back great. Back checking there. Um, okay, so we've come a long way. 60 episodes. Um, the first season, if we go back, was all about our quote unquote pivot to product. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when we got a chance to talk about how we, um, we you know, we were a, a digital agency for a long time, which meant that we did websites and apps and all types of stuff. Um, but we then pivoted into saying, you know what, we're going to double down into making software into building and designing interfaces mm -hmm. for businesses mostly. Right. And in the process of doing that, we got to explore like, how's the best way to do this? Mm -hmm. How do, how do the, how do the best companies do this? How do we want to do this? Mm -hmm. Um, and that was when we really fell in love with lean and agile, um, which then led us into this idea of cross-disciplined, um, work, mm -hmm. small collaborative teams, which we now yep. affectionately call product teams. Yes. Made up of craft teams. That's right. And so the definition of the difference between craft teams and product teams being like the work that you're doing every day with your team, building products, that's your product team. Mm -hmm. Getting better at your craft and working with your peers that are of like skill, that's your craft team. Yep. And, and it made a place sense. for both yep. of them, but yeah. And it made sense that those first 10 episodes were, yeah, season one was around product teams because it's really what we value and talk about most. Yeah. And it's how we build product. It's around, well, it's because it's really how we found that products are built best is through um, individuals that come together and work as a team. And it's really not rocket science. No. I mean, if anything, but, it's, it's yeah. simplifying it a yeah. lot. Yeah. I mean, don't make it so hard to where it's like, how are we best going to achieve this? Well, most things that, you know, are achieved that if you excel at, whether it's in athletics or think about project work in school or education, even into the work world, or even just your own neighborhood. I mean, obviously you live in a neighborhood full of people and it's a called a community. And yep. uh, most people choose to live in a community surrounded by people, um, yep. conversation, people of different backgrounds. Um, so it's not, again, it's not rocket science. It's taking that kind of just general foundational belief of like things are best done with others um, that we just bring that into the workplace. And that's how we best have found to build product. Okay, so Larissa's, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Larissa's sending us a message. The first recording event on the calendar was February 1st, 2018. No, 2019. So we were, there's, it was split the difference. February, it got shipped in March. Okay, I'm sorry. Now I got to come back around. We just, I'm struggling there a little bit. Um, <laughs> You know what I thought I'd do? I thought I'd have some fun with this real quick. I want to share, I want to, I just want to see if you remember what it was like that first few seconds of us turning on the, the audio equipment to record. This is going to be episode zero. This was the preview episode. Okay. Can I share that with you? Do it. And then maybe we can bring that back in. Hold on. Let me, let me share my recording, share computer sound, advanced, just the sound, share, boom. All right. This is this is when we were sitting on the couches back in the office. Mm, HQ. Oh man, I missed the office. We'll be back. On them. Hold on. Okay. This is the beginning. This is the first episode. Uh, the old uh, song. From Crema, this is Option 5, a podcast about product and innovation teams and how they take the leap to say yes and figure it out. I'm George Brooks. And I'm Dan Linhart. We were so formal. So this is George. I'm going to interject real quick because you're listening to something that Dan and I recorded about uh, a oh, month and a half, almost two months ago. Of the intro. Yeah, that's right. That's where it was the original recording. Yeah, and then we the said, dates were all going to be off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. We had totally had planned to go live February-ish time frame. And at the time, we had no idea what the name of this podcast was going to be. Um, you'll hear all about us describing the different names we thought it could be, but we didn't know. And you now know, if you are listening to this, that it's called Option 5. We'll unpack what that means in the first episode. But for the rest of this episode, just understand, we didn't know what we were going to call it. And uh, we've since uh, really come down on a name that we're very excited about. So please keep listening, and I hope you enjoy it. Where's the, where's, where do we start talking? I'm curious. Here it comes. 
What's this, Daniel? This is a podcast <laughs> brought, brought to you by Crema. And we'll get to that. I feel like that right there just defines our relationship. Dan, mm. what the heck are we doing? Let me tell you what we're doing, George. <laughs> it's like, that is, that is perfect. <laughs> I have so many doubts about every decision I'm making in my life right now, Dan. Well, let me, tell, me, tell, me tell you what you're doing right now, George. Your stomach's fine. It's okay. Just move forward. Lunch was good, George. It was fine. <laughs> I love it. I won't, I won't spend too much. Go back and let's listen to the, uh, all the original episodes. A couple of things I want to point out there is one, different music, super mm-hmm. formal intro. We had a very mm-hmm. like, hey. Written by Joel. Oh, that's right. One yep. of our developers. Mm-hmm. That He's was an his amazing pianist. Melodic tunes. Yep. Um, and then um, we called it option five, which is we something did. we're totally questioning right now, whether or not that is still a good <laughs> name for the, the podcast. More to come on that soon. Because well, um, it's such an inside joke. It, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it'd be different if it was just like the not knowing what you're doing option but you go forward anyway yeah because that's that what was, it was i mean that's what it really was. option five is just like yeah i mean figure it out as you move forward that's right so i mean i, I think it was the right thing for the right time right we, we did it we oh, landed yeah. it um and then uh first episode we just jumped straight into that the product conversation and that mm-hmm. first season looking through the titles here um, going, talking about the people, the product team. So I think that's where we went around and defined designers, developers, test engineers, product managers, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of just gave some names to some things. Yep. Um, I think those first set 10 episodes were really, really smart for us to kind of lay a foundation for what we're about, mm-hmm. what we care about, what we think about all the time. Yeah. It set um, the stage for, yeah, it's just as we think about the experience that we've had and the expertise we've developed it's all around product yeah. and so to start there just made a ton of sense and how we've modeled our product teams after our own organizational values you carried those over into our product teams yep. and our product teams are really just kind of this microcosm this micro ex- expression of a, a larger crema yeah totally um after 10 episodes we completely tapped all of our knowledge and we had no <laughs> idea what else to talk about there's not much I mean, to a certain, I'm kind of joking. You, it's like, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. What do you want it, to talk about? Like, we had the else. first 10 <laughs> planned out and it was a little bit like, where do we go from here? Yeah. Um, which is surprising because you and I can, you can, we can ramble, but mm. um, we didn't know where we wanted to take the structure of it. Mm-hmm. So we got really excited. I mean, of course, taking suit and being inspired by every other podcast on right. in the world. Um, we wanted to start talking to other people. Mm-hmm. I think we had one interview in that first season. Yeah, yeah, we talked to Todd Henry, which actually was a great conversation. Todd Henry is kind of a creative leadership mm-hmm. guru, author. Um, and I really enjoyed that conversation because he got into really talking about how he sees that everyone is creative. Mm-hmm. And that any, basically anyone who solves problems, I think is the way he says it. Maybe we can get a clip of that. Anyone who solves problems is creative. Right. Um, now there are those that are more formally trained in creative skill sets, but mm-hmm. the, the process itself is, is utilizing creativity. Side note, when we come back to that at some point, I would love to talk more about that topic because, um, um, basically listening to an interview recently with the, the CEO of Netflix, him talking about the fact that most companies are now needing to become creative organizations rather than, um, uh, assembly line organizations. Mm-hmm. So most of the way a business has been designed has been based off of the assembly line, mm-hmm. even non-manufacturing mm-hmm. um, industries. Yeah, management science. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, and it's pivoting back to the need for people to be solving problems continuously, creatively, into being adapting the way their organizations look and work mm-hmm. to reflect the need of that moment. Right. So. Todd, I think would champion that. And he, he's written even more books since we interviewed him. Um, super smart guy. Okay. So episode 11, we're back. The future of option five. It's the mm-hmm. title. That was September 18th, 2019. Uh, okay. So the second season quote unquote was really about um, interviews. We interviewed a ton of people and kind of the whole spectrum, both practitioners. So several people that were in product management, um, recruiting, um, 
uh, directors of like creative services. Um, our first one was in Phoenix. You remember that? Oh yeah. It was a PM in Phoenix. What was his name? What was his name? Um, I got it. Don't start. Don't start. Braden. Braden. We didn't release yeah, he, his first though, did we? His was 13. Yeah. Braden was a product, uh, is a product manager. And I can't remember. I think it was with a, uh, can't remember which company, but that was really interesting to see just how a, because we are basically, not basically, we could be considered if we're, you try to compare us to him, an outsourced version yep. of him. Yep. Um, but what he was doing was within the company and it was yeah, interesting right. to see, I mean, so much similar, similar language, similar ideas on how to lead and manage a product team, best ways to build product. I mean, it was really great. Yeah. And super sharp guy for being so young in his career. Um, which I think I remember we were in that, like our Airbnb house, which was a super sweet house, that pool in the back. That was awesome. Would stay and it was there just like, anytime. yeah, it was this random, like, Hey guy that doesn't know us, we're in your town, come over to our house that we rented. It was really, it was, it's like, trust us, please just show up and we're not going to hurt you. Okay. There's, yeah. You're not um, going to get buried anywhere. Yeah, totally. <laughs> But I think that was a great starting. Um, we ended up releasing the episode with Jeff Godolph, I think, before his. Um, just because Jeff is like industry known. He's mm -hmm. a, already an author speaker. And I nerded out. I, it, this was my first like author interview. I was so nervous. I wonder, can, do you mind if we listen to the intro of that to see if you can hear how nervous Let's I was? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So because they trust the agile versus design thinking and deal uh, a little bit for me, a little bit of a fanboy, not going to lie. Um, just, um, uh, and we'll get into that in a second, but, um, really love the th things that you've been creating over the years. Um, um but I want to give it to you first, go ahead and give it a quick introduction to yourself, um, and kind of what you've been working on. And then we'll, we'll jump in. I have a handful of questions, but really this, our podcast is very conversational. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of unpack it as we move forward. Uh, just as a side note, Sound that fine? was, that was after me rambling for like at least three minutes. I just couldn't <laughs> figure out how to like introduce this guy. And I didn't know how interviews were going to go. And I was so nervous. And yeah. for context, Jeff Goddard's book, um, Lean UX, it was transformational for us. When mm -hmm. we read that, it was yeah. one of the books. That the running lean, lean. Running Lean. Running Lean was a super practical book, but I think I, I reread it before the interview with him. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is still very much who Crema is. Mm -hmm. And at that point I realized how big of an impact he had on us. And then it was just like this, like the, it ballooned in my head, the kind of importance of this conversation. Right. <laughs> I was so nervous. Um, but yeah, that conversation with Jeff, I think was uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I wanted to point out, he goes into the, the quality of high performing product teams, mm -hmm. um, and there's a clip from that that we'll play uh, that, that I want to play. So if we can clip that in, um, yep. I just, he's, he's again, he actually has just put out another book, um, I think around um, like uh, something with freelancing. Um, really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So we pivoted into uh, interviews. What were some of the other interviews during that time? Any of those that stand out to you, Dan? Um, oh, I, one of the interviews I did was with um, Gideon, I believe it's Taub is how you pronounce it. Yeah, um, yep. It was just really the whole topic was dynamics, team dynamics, and how do you as a product manager communicate well? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really around communication. Um, the title of it is Aligning Strong Opinions. And so we got into that a lot of how do you lead people in a way to where you can make decisions quickly? Um, particularly if you have people in the room that are of strong opinions, which for the most part, I mean, if you have a team of 10, I would say at least half, if not more, will have strong opinions because people care. Oh yeah. People. Especially when you're like, it's a purpose driven project or a really like a very aligned, like mm -hmm. people know where they're going. They all yep. want to make it awesome. And they, you get, you get people that have strong thoughts for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. He is the CEO of, uh, Pinkaloo Technologies. And I believe what they did, it was all around, um, I'm going to have to go back a little bit in my brain. It was all around giving corporations. Oh yeah. Um, the charitable the, giving. Yeah. The charitable giving, the ability to um, give through payroll. I believe you could have a certain yep. like, 
you could have like a certain percentage of your payroll go to uh, charity or whatnot, but it was a pretty, it's a pretty cool product and they're based out of DC. Um, oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a cool, that was a cool interview. I think Great. what's fun is that we've had an opportunity to talk to the kind of the spectrum, those that are in house that are working at big tech mm-hmm. start, start or tech probably enterprises at this point. Um, yep. Those that have their startup or they're the founders themselves and they're kind of running as the product owner. Um, of course, our practitioners, we talked to our team. Yep. Um, I like, I remember one of the first, I think, interviews we did because we were pulling in somebody kind of last second was with Landon Young. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't realize he had been with us for two years at that time, but he was a strategist with us. And um, I remember thinking he was super formal on the podcast. It was like, what are you doing? Why is your voice like that? And it was like, he was so formal and so put together. Um, but it went really well to, to interview our team. And we've done that since then talking yeah, to Tuck and Tyler times. and several other folks. Yep. Okay. So then we got through season two, lots of interviews. Yep. We then kind of stopped scheduling interviews and it was like, okay, cool. Let's take a second to breathe. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we, you and I, I'm trying to remember how we got into this, how we decided to start shaping our own framework. It was all around learning organizations. We were doing a ton around what is it that we're really good at. Yeah. If we were to try to be unique or different in um, showing people how we build product and what makes us, what makes that, I don't know, secret sauce, so to yep. speak. Yep. The creme de la creme. Oh, um, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. It was all around, we learn really fast. We're really fast learners, and then we are really good at deciding how to apply that learning. And so that's where we got into learning organizations. What are learning organizations? And then we were like, well, how do we learn? What, what, how do we feel people learn? And that's when the learning loop came around, the adaptive framework. Right. Yeah. And then we nerded out. Those were fun episodes because we didn't mm-hmm. really know where we were going. We kind of mm-hmm. had some ideas. We were shaping the, the language around it. And to be honest, we're still shaping the language around that. Yep. Um, but it was really fun for you and I to get to kind of talk through those early conversations. I think there was actually one of the episodes, I think it was in the unpacking a process for learning where, um, or it might've been continuous learning where basically it was very obvious. I think you said, hold on. I don't exactly have a formed thought here. And it was like, none of this is formed. We're like, we're, we're, we're doing it on the fly here. Um, uh, trying to figure out what that looked like and creating our learning uh, loop, which now we refer to as the adaptive loop, mm-hmm. um, and then trying to come up with our framework, which we then landed uh, around this idea of disciplines, uh, or excuse me, postures, disciplines, and structures, mm-hmm. which is still what we're going with and still um, what we're starting to craft some um, content around right now. Right. Yep. Uh, so that that season was, or I keep calling them seasons. We intentionally said we won't call them se- seasons, and now I'm just doing it by default. That chapter. That chapter, yeah, um, <laughs> was us kind of going through and just tearing that down piece by piece. So yep. um, the innovation happens in learning loops, positive postures of dis- cross-discipline teams, mm-hmm. power of retrospectives. I think the power of retrospectives is probably one of my favorite episodes for just the most really good. practical thing that we do, Yep, which comes back to just really good feedback loops, yep. right? Yep. Um, and that being kind of the most powerful thing that you can put inside your organization is a constant mm-hmm. feedback back loop anywhere that you can find to put it. Right. It's yeah. a really good example of a strong discipline that allows you to look back and learn from the past while you're continuing to move forward. Yeah, totally. Um, and then Dan, you pointed out one of your favorite episodes was the um, humble confidence. Mm-hmm. I, there's a lot of laughing and I really just, liked we it. We just had so much fun in that. There was, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny though. If you listen yeah. to the whole thing, it goes from like us being super serious because it's kind of a, a philosophical way of being. Oh, totally. Yeah. To then you being like, say what? <laughs> Today, we are going to be unpacking a particular posture, one that we employ or utilize or talk about a lot we talk about a lot we want it we look for it when we hire people we look for it um when we're coaching we look for it in one-on-ones we look for it in our clients and it's this aspect of humble confidence say what those are (laughs) what did you just do what did you just do there that was fantastic
<laughs> and we just we cracked up and couldn't, uh, couldn't bring yeah. ourselves back. Well, I mean, we say it all the time. We really, it's not just lip service. It truly is part of who we are around. Um, it's kind of like, take yourself seriously, but not too seriously. Right. You know, kind of thing. It's like, right. it's having a balance between, yes, I'm going to be self-confident, but also no, I get a lot of things wrong and I can learn yeah. from it. You yeah. know, it's just <laughs> that balance of like, you have to have the humility to learn. If someone calls you out, be like, yep. I don't know what I'm talking about right now, you know, <laughs> that's but, it, that's it. but being able to move through in the confident and you can be confident even when you have no app, you have no idea what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's a confidence in admitting that you need to learn. And I think maybe there's just this, not a stigma, mm. but it's like, if I don't know it, I'm going to be found out. Or if I don't know it, Imposter syndrome. Yeah, imposter syndrome. People might, might not, my team may not follow me. You know, yeah. there's just, so I think if you're confident in being um, without all knowledge, <laughs> it just sounds so paradoxical, doesn't it? It's like, oh, dude, our especially culture just in follows, today's culture. It's just right? like everyone wants to be like, you know, I want to follow or I know everything or people act like they know everything. It's yeah. just like, I, don't know about you, but for me, it's just like, I am so caught off guard in a good way when someone says, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, yeah. You'll have to ask someone else because I have no idea. It's not my um, area of expertise. I'm just like, wow, you are, you're just like me. You know, you're not, you know, it's like that old saying of like, everyone puts on their pants the same way. Mm -hmm. At the end, you know, everyone gets mm -hmm. up in the morning, brushes their teeth, puts on their pants. It's like, let's not be overly glorifying of, you know, all these figures. I mean, I don't know. We're a little off topic here, but that's as we think about humble confidence, it's like you can be confident, but let's also be real. We're all learning here. <laughs> there's a guy, there's a guy at our church that I can't remember what his name is. Maybe you'd remember it. Um, he wrote a, he wrote a book and actually has spoken on this idea of paradox um, and paradox primarily in education and business. Mm. And I think that's what we're saying is like, there's so many paradoxes. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy that you can be both humble and confident at the same time. It's crazy that you can know absolutely nothing and still deliver a great outcome. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, there are all these pair, even you and I've been kind of chatting earlier today. It's like, there's paradoxes between having good processes mm -hmm. and yet giving yourself the, the, the creative space to adapt and change if you need to. Mm -hmm. Like that is a paradox because you feel like it feels like you need to structure your processes, you know? Yep. And, um, but at the same time, if you just have pure creativity, then it's just chaos. Mm -hmm. So the paradox of the tension, I think that word tension is just, I love it. Cause it's just like, I think we, we have to live to learn to live in the tension between things. It's like, right. I'm not going to go political right now, but even, uh, yeah, I won't, I yeah. won't touch it. But like even our political parties, they're, they're so polarized Mm -hmm. that there's no ability to live in the paradox that maybe there's things we could learn from both mm -hmm. or right. maybe there's, there's ways that we can view the perspectives of multiple people groups mm -hmm. and, and value those perspectives, even mm -hmm. though if there, we, you know, we don't have to like build this pillar on one particular. And I'm probably by, by saying that I'm already making people upset. So I will stop. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so humble yeah. confidence, I think for you and I, it is by definition, probably our personal postures in life. And that probably is one of the, the strongest areas that lead into the culture that we've created at Crema. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which the podcast very much was like an exploration of saying like, we built this really cool company. It's a really yeah. fun place to work. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Um, I think one of the best ways to describe humble confidence is how you accept a compliment. So if someone says, man, you're really good at that. Like yeah. that is a yeah. gift. Like yeah. good for you. Uh-huh. I tweeted immediately. <laughs> Somebody the said person, I'm awesome. Like false humility is just like, oh no. You know, you kind of just like you want to be humble. It's like, oh no, I'm not that good. No, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But someone who's hum humble and confident says, Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I I've worked really hard. There's been yep. a lot of bumpy roads, but it's been a lot of work. I'm glad I can do it. Uh, thank you very much. That yep. is someone who is humble, you know, like they're saying, thank you, but they're also recognizing, you know, the hard work that's been put into it. And the exact opposite end of that spectrum, uh, in a good way, the other end of the humble and confident 
is if somebody critiques you or gives mm -hmm. you uh, constructive feedback, mm -hmm. the ability to go, oh, thank you for that feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to take that. I'm going to, I'm going to either process it and learn from it, make a decision of whether or not I want to apply that. But I, I really appreciate that you would give it to me. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a posture that the world doesn't have, um, let alone a lot of businesses. And, right. and maybe leaders specifically really struggle with that because there's, there's a fear. It's usually a fear of a loss of control, mm -hmm. and, which then leads to this, this, this a passion of micromanaging, which then is what we're kind of trying to say, break that down. Right. Um, I'll, I'll empower your teams to do great work through yep. humble confidence. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just skimming through the episodes here. So we kept nerding out. We kept going in loops. We, we had several episodes where it was like, whoa, we got to move on to something else because we've been talking about just um, post postures, disciplines, and structures for a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, well, we had something that forced us to move on to a different topic. <laughs> You don't say. Uh-huh. Uh, around April, end of mm. March, April. Um, again, remembering that our episodes are backlogged a little bit. So by the time we got the recording out, it kind of had already hit. Because it was March. When was the day that we went remote? March 16th, I think it was. It was when most companies that we know of went remote. I think that was a Monday. Yep. There was a episode, I want to see if I can find it because the intro to the episode I thought was actually pretty good where we went live for the first time. Uh -huh. We decided to yeah, do we, a we live recording, some live, which was fun. It was fun. The quality wasn't quite as good, I remember. Um, and it was stressing me out because I wasn't sure if it was going to work. <laughs> right. And so it was just like, I don't know what I'm doing and we're live and I can't breathe. And <laughs> And I'm trying to like fiddle with things off to the side while you're just like, let's keep talking. And I'm like, I don't, can't do multiple things at the same time. I think today you and I just want to maybe just do a little catch up. Uh, this is, mm. this is behind the scenes. We don't have a scripted conversation around any particular topic of, you know, our disciplines, postures, and structures or product teams or whatever. Um, we trying to do a lot right now at Crema. And so you and I needed to catch up anyways. So mm -hmm. we thought we'd give uh, people maybe a little bit of um, a behind the scenes look at some of the things that we're working on, um, on a number of different to, to basically practice what we preach, which is that we're really trying to lean in right now. We're trying to think about how we get, um, how we get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm even more so in an situation and lean into right. um, what, what is the next version of Crema going to look like? But that was obviously a transformational for everyone mm -hmm. in the world. And every mm -hmm. single person in the world was dealing with the exact same thing at the exact same time. Yeah. It was also when everybody was putting out content about COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and we were cautious because we were like, what do we want to say? How do we handle this? It's kind of, it, it's, it had already started to become like we were seven days in and there had been 700,000 podcasts released about COVID. Right. And so we were like, oh, are we going to do it as well? It was like, well, we have to do something. We have to say something. Right. Um, and so we talked about, so we have this idea within the framework around disciplines, postures, and structures that yep. um, it's always good to take inventory. Um, so a true learning organization will routinely take inventory. Retrospectives are great. It's a great example of taking inventory of a specific uh, meeting, specific place in time. You can be more kind of general, like taking inventory of like, how did we do this year? How are we doing? Um, how are you doing? I mean, there's just a consistent discipline of taking inventory. And COVID forced us to take inventory at the time, what we're calling mm -hmm. around our structures. So we were taking like literally the the fundamentals of business i think mm -hmm. everyone was going through of like we need to take inventory of like operationally cost containment cost management how you know cash flow all of these things there was a long laundry list of checking of like how are we doing we need to turn inward a little bit how are our people doing right checking in with each one of them how are they feeling there was a lot of anxiety there still is a lot of anxiety but at that moment I, a lot of isolation so just taking stock of yeah. the organization and turning inward. Yep. However, and we told this to our staff even before this episode came out, we wanted to make sure that they knew that we were turning inward. How do we, how do we put it? Turning inward 
only so that we can focus outward again That's right. quickly. That's right. um, we had read an article um, by an author that we both love, Andy Crouch, around just the idea of like when winter comes, you know, there's the <laughs> blizzard and then there's winter. And a lot of it was around this. We were idea scared. Of, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it was, it was, there was apprehension and it's like, yeah. okay, we need to, when winter comes, it's like, okay, how, how are our stockpiles? Are, are we prepared for this? Cause we may not be able to leave the log cabin for a while. Are we, do we have <laughs> what we need? Our Does supply everybody stuff? have cans of corn? <laughs> <laughs> have you chopped enough wood? Um, yeah. Right. Right. But then we knew that the blizzard uh, at some point would end and then we enter into, okay, how do we think? To, and, and that's what we talked about is like, we need to start thinking differently because business is going to change. Yeah. The way thing, the way we do business is going to change. So how can we get out in front of that curve, uh-huh. be different? How can we yep. think different? What does it look like to be creative in a time where it's not natural, nor does it feel right to be creative. It feels right I to kind of commiserate. It's almost guilty. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we knew that we needed to, if we were going to weather this really well, it's like, this is a perfect time to take inventory, not of, are we structurally sound, but also where could we go in the future? But that was episode 33, right? So keeping values of love and generosity alive in your company. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a mix of 33 and then also 36, um, where we talked about how our perspectives were shifting. It was, I mean, there was just such a crazy time. It uh-huh. feels so long ago. It was six months ago now, which is crazy. That, that, yet yeah, that feels so short ago. Like, I mean, it, it, it's just it's a strange paradox of time. But yeah, I think tomorrow is literally, wait, yep, it is. Tomorrow is six months. Tomorrow is six months to the day that we went full remote. Yeah. And, and I mean, you and I, we were, we just come back from a trip, a business trip. And we, we were just kind of going like, what, what's happening? Like it was so overwhelming. Yeah. And what was so strange at the time, and I think we said this on a few of our episodes after that was it was both the scariest and the most fulfilling time that I'd had in a while. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know, I think I gotten a little flat for like anything that was giving me drive to get creative Mm-hmm. And I just had a mission. I didn't even know what the mission was. It was just like we need to like keep There's our fires. Heads, yeah, like we need to keep yeah. our heads up during this time. Mm-hmm. And um, having the podcast was really helpful to be able to just have a space to talk about it and think through it and um, give us an excuse to get together and go like what are, what are we saying to ourselves? What are we saying to our team and, and to mm-hmm. our clients um, about how to handle this moment in time? Mm-hmm. Uh, now. Praise God, um, literally, we've come out on the other side um, in, a, in a relatively positive state, at least as far as a company, and then trying to be generous, continue to be generous to, to those that are, it's still, still rough. I mean, we're not out of it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're listening to this in the future, future George and Dan, when we go back to listen to after, you know, 120 episodes, um, it's still happening. The virus hasn't gone away. So maybe by then it will. It'll be at least settled down a little bit. You just um, got 12 monkeys on me. <laughs> that's right that's right gosh that was a weird movie um, a really good movie yeah it was so good yeah um okay so that kind of pivoted our conversation um and then and then we've kind of been jumping around a little bit um mm-hmm. both from to interviews with individuals um which we've got to call out our talk our conversation with form mm. was just so encouraging Fantastic. Um, it was if heartfelt. you haven't, if you haven't listened to that episode, Oh, help me find it. What's 48. Yeah. Yeah. Um, episode 48, we got a chance to talk to, uh, Mark and John from form, um, who's a, a consultancy based in Liverpool, UK. Um, and they've been, a, they've been a consultant with us for at that time, maybe a year and a half or something like that, mm-hmm. maybe a year and change. And we continue to work with them they just have this ability to, to they, I think they talked about the bicycle. We kind of look at it really, really as kind of two pedals on a bike. So a bit of a strange example there, but if you're going to go and do some serious cycling, which I know you guys like doing, mm, um, I do. you're kind of not going to do it with one pedal on a bike. So you've got strategy as kind of one side of the bike that, Businesses need to be super smart around their proposition, how they connect with customers, 
how they actually articulate what they sell and why it actually matters to their customers. But there's another pedal to a bike. So Mark, what's that? Well, it's the people. Those guys are just brilliant and they've got British accents, which just make them smarter than us. So five times. Yeah, five times at least. <laughs> um, but we just, we just had such a pleasure getting to know them. It was fun to have them on the podcast. Um, we'll hope to do it again. Uh, Absolutely. Honest. So where have we been fit since then? Um, a couple more interviews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, probably my favorite since then um, was my conversation with Aaron Dignan mm-hmm. from um, The Ready. Um, Aaron wrote a book called The Brave New Work, which has probably been the best ro- book that I've read maybe in the last year or two. It's really um, good. Yeah, just very, very practical, very much how we think. It's all about kind of um, removing bureaucracy. Um, that's kind of his 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 mission statement is I desire to remove bureaucracy from the organizational world. And, um, I think it's really hard to keep those conversations with people like that, that you just kind of connect with, like on their, their ethos to keep them short. Oh (laughs) yeah. I remember being like, Oh, how am I going to land this one? We could just keep talking for a couple hours. Just like go on. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Tell me more. Yep. Yeah. Um, we've we've had some good interviews. We've interviewed some staff. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, uh, Nate around sales and Tuck around product management and Alexa around marketing and really how does their work tie into kind of that overall framework of managing? What does it look like to manage their disciplines, postures, and structures within their own work? Um, and it was just a really fun conversation and ability to introduce some of the individuals on our team and yeah, totally. how do how do each craft? How does each craft? design, development, test engineering, and so forth. How do they think about their work and how does their, their work intersect with our, our ethos around the adaptive framework? So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then we got to speak about a couple of our, uh, this was yeah a couple months ago, our cultural goods and how we maintain innovation internally around Venture Lab and Lab Fridays. Yeah. So that's really basically our Lab Fridays, the, the 80-20 model. You know, mm-hmm. uh, very similar to the 80-20 model that uh, Google used to do. And then our version of a, um, of a, a incubator. incubator, so to yeah. speak, that, yeah. uh, again, we're going to, um, in the future, put more muscle behind. But uh, the idea that we can um, create and then um, generate and then cr- uh, ideas and then create products um, at every other Friday uh, by bringing in all of our principles around product teams, our framework, and basically, you know, putting our money where our mouth is and eating our yeah. own dog food, so to speak. And yeah. Like the things that we do for our clients, you know, it's like, hey, we have a lot of really intelligent and um, just wildly creative people that care about a lot of the problems that are in our world. And so how can we put that to use and create some solutions around it? I think a lot of the future episodes will be about Venture Lab because we're, we're going to be doing some fun things and some, some news coming out of that soon. Um, it's probably the thing that we get asked about the most, especially in mm-hmm. Kansas city mm-hmm. is people look at Kremlin. They're like, Oh cool. A dev shop, like a lot of other dev shops, not knowing, you know, the ins and outs of like what makes us unique and, and what, why we're great. Yeah. Um, but what they can call out is like the press that we've gotten at least locally around the work that we've done with venture lab. Uh, and that's fun. Cause it's a story we like to tell. Um, mm-hmm. It's, uh, I'll be just transparent. It's been really hard to facilitate those days, the Mm -hmm. lab days, uh, remote, because such a big part of what Lab Friday was, was about the proximity and kind of the, you know, the stereotypical like Silicon Valley terms of like serendipitous collision that would have, that happen in the office. Oh, it's so reused, but it it really was true. Like, it was like, okay, cool. Like by being in the same space, by not working on client work, by having, um, you know, lunch brought in so that you're, you're, you know, you just together, you end up creating some really interesting things just by the, the creative energy in the space. Mm-hmm. Sounds so weird, in, but you get in, what I'm saying. Isn't it amazing as uh, the Valley? It's like serendipitous collisions. It's like, let's just call it what it is. It's called human proximity. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Really, it's you were proximity around I know. and closeness to yep. other people. Yeah. Overhearing conversations, yeah. Um, you know, smelling the person next to you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's <laughs> a common thing. Yeah. 
And I think that's one of the things that we're both cautious about and thinking a lot about. Smelling um, people? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I, I missed your smell. We've talked about that in previous <laughs> episodes. But it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so your cologne is so good. Um, no, but I think, I think it's something that we're thinking about is as soon as it's safe, we do want to figure out a way to get back together um, yep. as, a, as our team. We're not doing it until then, until we have a way to do it safely. Um, so we're, we're looking until next year before that'll probably happen. But um, I'm not one that's saying that, you know, 100% remote is the way that will work forever. Mm-hmm. Because I think there's so much value. And I think Simon Sinek said this exact same thing recently, where he said, all right, people, settle down with your whole, the world will go remote, we'll all work from our bedrooms for the rest of time. It's not true. And it's not good. Um, and you can say, I'm sure there are arguments on both sides, but I think the value of being in the same space, um, working with each other is, is still there. Um, yep. So we'll look to get back to that when, when we can. And I think that's, that's what the story going forward with, with this podcast is continuing to talk about what are the things that keep us from doing great work? What are, what's going on in the world that we can point out and saying, wow, that's cool. Like right now I'm missing the Apple keynote. That feels weird. I always watch the Apple keynote, but I thought this podcast was important. Oh, just saying. Although let's be honest. Is that, just is, like, is that your segue to wrap it up? I might, it's already, it's probably over by now. Um, uh, finally, the last episode that we just put out, um, or one of the last episodes that we just put out was this idea of tapping into curiosity. And I think mm-hmm. coming back to why we love what we get to do is that we get to, we get to be creative, which again is about finding ways to solve problems. Um, you and I get to do it with Crema um, and that our roles are changing literally by the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and we get to see our teams doing it with our clients. We get to see our growth team doing it with the market. Um, and we want to help other people to maybe think about how they can do it with their organizations, both creatively with technology and with culture, um, which by the way, happens to be our purpose statement. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I'm excited about the future of the podcast, 60 episodes. We're just getting started. Shoot, this first 60 doesn't have anything on us. You just wait till the next 60. Mm. I'm so confident in a humble way. Yeah, I mean, who knows? We'll hold it loosely. What another way to be? We'll just stay open-minded. Okay. Dan, this is fun. This has been so Hopefully good. you had a, um, a little nice little trot down memory lane. Oh, <laughs> I was like, did I run today? <laughs> and did, if I did, did I tell George? I don't know if I did. As a, as a side story, we were in Colorado recently with the kiddos and we were riding horseback. And every time the, the horse would just like basically just barely start to trot or bounce at all. Right. The kids were like, I'm galloping. I'm gall-. <laughs> and the guide, he was such a funny dude. He was just like, nope, that's called a trot. Yep. <laughs> this is the, so, like, the front pain. foot just slipped a little bit. <laughs> Emmy, who is the most stubborn child that I have and I love her to death for it but she had the most stubborn horse and that horse was just like no I'm gonna eat grass instead I'm gonna put my head down and won't let you move constantly would stop and she was at the back of the pack and you just hear this little voice dad wait wait for me (laughs) so that podcast this podcast is not gonna be like that we're gonna keep moving forward nope um on a on a good horse just good trot just keep driving that horse forward (laughs) If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to see what's next with uh, this podcast, where we're going with Crema. If you haven't checked out Crema, if you don't know who we are or what these two guys do for a living, uh, we, um, we made an agency. We made a company, a firm, a studio, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> where we get to design and build uh, technologies for some of the world's leading organizations. Uh, we get to build experiences that, that really hopefully make people love the products that they use. Um, so that allows us to use both design technology and culture through our coaching Mm -hmm. and our consultative services to help people, um, thrive both in business and in life. So, um, more to come on the episodes coming forward and more news coming soon about what we're going to, where we're going to go with this, this, this old podcast, because we might be changing some things up here soon, Daniel. Oh, we just dropped a few hints there. Just a little little finger. What's going to happen? Yep. What's going to happen? Um, check out our, our website, crema.us slash podcast to learn more. And um, 
If you haven't already, make sure you share these episodes out with friends, family, loved ones, children, neighbors, mailman. Oh, I was Warman. almost going to say. Were you? Yes. Uh, we're, we're just Vulcan mind meld right there. Seriously. I was like, I was going to say the, the postman. Yeah, which I think, I don't know what the proper term, po- post person, the, the, the mail carrier, the mail carrier. That's what, we'll go with that. Mm. It's probably just because I see him pull up here like seven times a day as we get different Amazon packages. Oh, the Amazon boxes. Mm. Let's leave on that note. I'm done with it. Goodbye. Bye, guys. <laughs>